So hello everyone. It is a great honor for me to have the opportunity to present our work. Nowadays, graph neural networks have shown strong expressive power on graph data mining. In most GNNs, the same aggregation methods and parameters are used throughout a graph. However, this may cause problems due to the complex complexity of real-world datasets. To improve GNN's performance on such datasets, we propose meta-weight graph neural network to adaptively learn the information of different nodes. First, we give a brief introduction of graphs and graph neural networks. Graph is a type of data structure consisting of nodes and edges. Today, graphs are widely used to depict real-world data, such as social networks, citation relationships, biological interactions, and more. As a powerful approach to extracting and learning information from relational data, graph neural networks have flourished in many applications. They are an effective framework for representation learning of graphs. Over the years, many classical GNN models, such as GCN, GAT, SGCN, GraphSage, and more have embraced the assumption of homophily on graphs, which assumes that connected nodes tend to have the same labels. Under such an assumption, the propagation and aggregation of information within graph neighborhoods are efficient. However, there do exist real-world graphs with heteropoly settings where linked nodes are more likely to have different labels. Therefore, some recent research papers propose to adapt the graph convolution to extend GNN's expressive power beyond the limit of homophily assumption. These methods improve the expressive power of GNNs by changing the definition of the neighborhoods in graph convolutions. For example, H2GCN extends the neighborhoods to higher order neighbors, and AMGCN constructs another neighborhood considering feature similarity. From our perspective, though, homophily and heteropoly are both extremely simple measurements of node local distributions, or for short, a node D because they only consider the labels of the graphs. In real-world graphs, topological structure, node feature, and positional identity play a more crucial role, and together they result in the complexity of the NLDs. To show this, we visualize the card centrality, a measurement of the topological structure of nodes, to show two situations in real-world datasets. In CORA, the card centrality reveals high consistency in different parts, well, that of chameleon shows an obvious distinction between different parts, which further illustrates our point. Furthermore, the correlation between topological structure and node feature distributions is not consistent. Therefore, using one graph convolution to integrate the topological structure and node feature information leads to ignorance of such complex correlation. To tackle these two challenges, here we propose meta-weight graph neural network based on the meta-weight mechanism and the adaptive convolution. So the visualization of the framework is shown in the figure. Uh, first, we generate the meta-weight to model the NLD considering topological structure, node feature, and positional identity distributions separately. Then we integrate them via an attention mechanism, as shown in part A. Next, the key contributions in part B is the adaptive convolution consisting of the decoupled aggregation weights and independent convolution channels for node feature and topological structure. We will further explain our methods and give a theoretical analysis about the insufficient NLD modeling of the existing GNNs to strengthen our argument. So in the first stage, we aim to learn a specific key to guide the graph convolution adaptively. To push the limit on graphs with complex NLDs, first we need to answer the question about what exactly NLD is and how to explicitly model it. In our work when discussing NLD, we refer to the node patterns in topological structure, node feature, and positional identity fields. Topological structure and node feature are widely used in the learning of node representations, and the positional identity aims to improve the expressive power of GNNs than the first Westphalian lemon test, which means empowering GNNs with the ability to detect more complicated graph structures. To extract information of different fields, we use the local degree profile for topological structure the sorted node feature sequence for node feature, and the distance of the shortest paths between any two nodes for positional identity. 
After being studied by different mechanics, such as GRU and MLP, we can obtain distributions of each field for modeling NLD. So the above mentioned process models three specific local distributions and the overall local distribution of nodes could be correlated with one of them or their combinations to different extents due to the complex variations of these. Thus, we combine them using an attention mechanism to learn the corresponding combination weights to obtain a better representation of NLD, or in other words, meta weight. Then for the second challenge, instead of using the same convolution over all nodes in the predefined neighborhood, we adaptively conduct graph convolution with two aggregation weights and three channels based on our learned meta weight. First, we decouple topology and feature in aggregation to adaptively weigh the correlation between neighbor nodes and ego node from the local distribution concept. This decoupling process empowers the graph convolution to distinguish the different dependence on the corresponding factors and adjust itself to achieve the best performance. To further model the complex correlation and maintain the original signals, we boost the node representations with the independent channel, node feature channel and topological structure channel, respectively. So, after a detailed introduction of our model, we offer a theoretical analysis about the insufficient modeling of NLDs of existing GNNs in order to illustrate the importance of modeling the complex NLDs. So local edge cohomophily can be a relatively plain measurement for NLD, and we want to give a learning guarantee based on it to show that the upper bound for the possibility of bad representation learning will soar when the complexity of NLD rises. Given such purpose, we set P as the random variable for local edge homophily of each node. Thus, the variance of P exhibits how the NLD differs throughout the graph. We hope to show that as the variance increases, the possibility of learning a better representations will grow rapidly at the exponential level as presented. So I uh, will consider a one-layer GCM model as an example and derive such a learning guarantee. From this, we demonstrate that the Euclidean distance between the output embedding of a node and its expectation is small when the variance of P is relatively small. However, as the complexity of P increases, the upper bound of the learning guarantee will rapidly grow which indicates that the traditional learning algorithm is no longer promising under this circumstance. Therefore, it is necessary to design an adaptive convolution mechanism like MetaWeight GNN to adjust the convolution operator based on those various distribution patterns. So uh, for experimental assessment, we evaluate MetaWeight GNN on semi-supervised node classification tasks compared with state-of-the-art methods. When come to data sets, we use data sets considering both homophily and heterophily. Mm. We compare the performance of MetaWeight GNN to the state-of-the-art methods. Compared with all baselines, the proposed MetaWeight GNN generally achieves or matches the best performance on all data sets, especially MetaWeight GNN achieves an improvement of over 20% on chameleon and squirrel, demonstrating the effectiveness of MetaWeight GNN while the graph data is not homophily or heterophily dominated, but a combined situation of the both. Uh, to better investigate the performance of MetaWeight GNN on datasets with different global or local edge homophily distributions, we conduct experiments on a series of synthetic datasets. MetaWeight GNN outperforms GCN and GAT on all homophily settings. On the other hand, we test our model on three combined graphs, homophily dominated, mixed situation, heterophily dominated. As the figure reveals, MetaWeight GNN disentangles the combined data well and achieves good results on all three synthetic datasets. Mm. To estimate the effectiveness of each part in MetaWeight GNN, we conduct an ablation study by removing one component at a time on our synthetic datasets. 
The results of the ablation study are in the table shown. These results support our claim that distribution-based metal weight generator is capable of capturing different patterns which could be used in the adaptive convolution. We then investigate the sensitivity of hyperparameters of metal weight GNN on CORA and SCORA datasets. We test metal weight GNN with different hop numbers K, varying it from zero to four, as the figure shows. As K increases, the performance is generally stable. Besides, a small K is fair enough for metal weight GNN to reach satisfactory results. Oh, no. To analyze the impact of alpha, the ratio of two convolution weight, we study the performance of metal weight GNN with alpha ranging evenly from zero to one. The result indicates that different graphs vary in the dependency of feature and topology. In addition, metal weight GNN is relatively stable when alpha changes around the maximum point. So here comes a summary. In this paper, we we'll focus on improving the expressive power of GNNs on graphs with different local distribution patterns. We first show empirically that different local distribution patterns do exist in some real world data sets. With theoretical analysis, we show that this variety of local distribution patterns have a negative impact on the performance of traditional GNNs. To tackle this problem, we propose meta wage graph neural network consisting of two key stages. First, to model the NLD with, of each node, we construct the meta wage generator with multi-scale information, including structure, feature, and position. Second, to decouple the correlation between node feature and topological structure, we conduct adaptive convolution with two aggregation weights and three channels. Accordingly, we can filter the most instructive information for each node and efficiently boost the node representations. Overall, MetaWeight GNN outperforms corresponding GNNs on real-world benchmarks while maintaining the attractive properties of GNNs. We hope MetaWeight GNN can shed light on the influence of distribution patterns on graphs and inspire further development in the field of graph learning. So uh, this is the end of our presentation. Thank you. OK, thank you, Xiaojun, for your presentation. Uh, anyone who is interested in asking a question, you can mute yourself. Um, okay, we still have many time for the Q&A. OK, I, I have a question for you. So. Um, I I I I can see from the the name, yeah. As, as the name indicates, do, you, do your work has some correlation with meta learning. Mm, our meta means that we, uh, kind of model each node and find the feature of each node, and uh, we use this feature to guide the convolution process. But uh, our meta meant to be a uh, more of uh, uh, I, I I don't think it is uh, seriously the same paradigm. Oh, yeah, I see, I see. Yeah. Uh, from the name, I I it came to me. Um, so at the first impression, maybe you <laughs> maybe you can use a some sort of meta learning mechanism, and that you can you know so feed the different. Yeah, you I I see the three sources of information, right? Feature, topology, and also, um, uh, position. And, yeah, position. You can, maybe you can train a meta, meta learning framework and feed the feature one by one and just let the network to determine which, which one or which the uh, fusion of the uh, information sources can benefit the most, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah just we to, use the um, attention mechanism to balance the relationship between these three features, but maybe we can have, uh, we can find a better way in the future. Yeah, I see. And yes, another question. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, and another question is that. So, uh, how do you guarantee that the the, the attention a layer can can find the best way to to uh, that the, the three of them you can you can so yeah so the question is that how how can the uh, attention network find the best combination of the sources I because so 
um, so which, which which form of attention you, you use is a dot product attention, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, as for the learning guarantee, we uh, the theory in our paper is to explain why the traditional GNNs perform early uh, on graphs with big variance uh, distributions. But, uh, you know, it is mathematically difficult to produce a theory that explains why attention works. Uh, it, I, I we, see, yeah. We just, yeah, you know, based on the computational theory, uh, we can use, of course, channel bound or such tools to calculate the learning guarantee. But we can only ensure the concentration property of these kind of methods, but it is difficult to measure whether it, uh, why they works. We can only measure the probability of whether they will perform ill. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, thank you for your answer. So any yeah. other audience would, would be interested in ask a question? And uh, okay, so so thank you again for your presentation. So I think we can move on to the last presentation. Uh, okay, thank you.